Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Building Community Profiles, Harness the Power of Low Mod Data to Highlight Community Needs. My name is Laura DiMaria and I am NASA's Executive Director and we are glad that you are with us today. So if you are new to NASA, we are the National Association for County, Community and Economic Development and we represent local government's affordable housing and community development programs. So I wanted to let you know that today is just one of the many fabulous educational opportunities that we at NASED offer. So this year in particular, we've hosted a whole year of trainings, five in total. We're looking forward to our last training of the year, uh, Section 3 Compliance coming up in October. And I will put in the chat some information with you about our education program, um, as well as information about membership in NASED if you are not a member. So today's discussion is being recorded and you will have the opportunity for Q&A at the end and you can utilize the chat for that throughout. If you have any questions as we proceed, please feel free to use the chat. So about today's webinar, My Sidewalk, who is a member of NASET, is on a mission to democratize data. With access to more than 4 billion data points from over 40 plus trusted and proprietary sources, My Sidewalk makes it easy for users to access data find insights and quickly create and share compelling data stories. Today's speakers are Maggie Jones, Assistant Director, uh, uh, Community Development at Tarrant County, Texas, and David Valdivieso, Strategic Partnership Manager at My Sidewalk. And without further ado, I turn it over to David and Maggie. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. Let me share my screen and sort of kick us off here. Um, as she mentioned, the reason why we're here today is to talk about how we can use low mod data, um, not only to identify places where we can make an investment of CDBG funds um, and generally understand of community by their economic needs, um, but also to stretch that one step further and really elaborate and enrich the story of place, um, leveraging my sidewalks, very unique uh, data platform um, and data storytelling um, uh, tools. So um, I was really excited to to do this work uh, or, or to participate in this uh, webinar because I am uh, of this background and we'll get into that a little bit more. And I was more excited that within uh, the ranks of, of NASED uh, sort of stardom, because I, I know you all hear from Maggie from time to time in, in other capacities. Um, I also see she asks a lot of questions to the general group, um, but she's also a user and uh, a customer of my sidewalk and not only a user and, and customer of my sidewalk, but somebody that comes up um, a lot internally as somebody who we're sort of building towards um, as a kind of an ideal customer profile in terms of their involvement um, and awareness of, of how they can leverage our tools. So that's what's coming uh, to you today. Um, just to give you a little bit of uh, background as Laura had men made mentioned uh, already, um, our uh, company's name is My Sidewalk. Um, we are based out of Kansas City, Missouri. If you've ever been in the Crossroads, Crossroads District in Kansas City, Missouri, we're smack dab in the middle of all of that. Um, it's an amazing place uh, to work, and it's it's specifically an amazing place to work because of our mission, and that's to make sure that data, data storytelling and the tools um, to accomplish those workflows um, are at the hands of change makers like everyone on this call, like Maggie, Obviously, um, because we believe that with data in hand, with the local capacity that already exists, um, we can help build stronger communities together. Um, but generally, all of our customers agree, and, and many of the people that we talk to in this industry agree, that doing data storytelling is very difficult. Um, often, um, you're often left to your own devices in gathering um, data about place, places that you're interested in but also the depth of where that data, uh, what, what that data can tell you um, and how to gain insights from that data um, is part of the workflow that that is actually very complicated. Um, and that's where we come in. Our uh, product is aimed at creating um, easy access to data for every place in the United States down to the block group level. 
and um, aggregating up to 16 levels of geography above that, um, including geopolitical boundaries uh, like uh, city council districts and legislative districts, um, as well as ta taxing jurisdictions like um, school districts and counties and county subdivisions place and everything in between. So um, a really amazing place um, to find data, but also data truncated at various levels of geography. Um, and that's because we try to make it easy to find insights about the communities that you care about. And often those insights happen um, either at a very micro level or at, at a trend at a meso or macro level. Um, and being able to identify quickly and um, drill down to your needs um, is where, where we come in. All of those insights, all of that data gathering um, put together is intended um, on creating impactful data stories and our customers make uh, data stories of, of all types. Um, where that comes uh, as an outcome uh, for organizations that we work with, um, that's obviously a, a time saving and money wrangling um, spent on data is massive. Um, putting together a database so that your um, you know, entire organization is governed by centralized data location is also very cumbersome. We help really solve that, that outcome for your organization. On top, on top of becoming um, a source of truth uh, for your community where people can anticipate, I can go to the Maggies of the world and ask for a data query and know that I can get a consistent answer in the formats that um, I'm used to. Um, it, it often helps people tell stories and find insights about place um, where you're informing stakeholders, um, let's say in, in um, a theme of um, you know, housing needs or um, environmental justice or uh, public safety, uh, public health. Um, all of that is intended on helping build the capacity of your team um, to do that work, right? So by leveraging our tool, you're going to have a ton of time saving um, and your team is going to be better spent, um, their capacity is better spent doing other things. Um, where we're building your data science capacity um, as a result. And then ultimately making an, an impact and uh, investing in where um, it matters most. So grant making and grant writing has been a huge theme for our organization in the last several months. Um, grant making uh, for uh, states and foundations and even counties who are interested in helping communities tell a story of need um, and us helping set up kind of a, a prefabricated template um, to help tell a story of need for people and vice versa. Communicating the story of need um, as a grant writer um, is something that we we do a lot of help in and actually where um, we'll dive in uh, the, ma the majority of, of today's time. Uh, so, yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, my name is David Valdivieso, and the reason why I'm so excited uh, to give this demo today is because I was once in um, the chair of many one of you. I worked for the city of, of Kansas City, Missouri, um, as a housing planner, trying to understand where in our community we could create areas of focus so that we can more strategically um, advanced um, some of our action items uh, in, in our annual action plan, um, as well as creating, um, you know, equity from an investment perspective, where it's taking place, how we can advance the public dollar, um, that increment more, how we can tell the story of that impact. And what always struck me as um, a limitation <laughs> is that HUD's tools allowed you to identify um, where where in a community you could make that investment right so like creating the that low mod um boundary um is one sort of uh barrier but but it is uh something that hud has tools uh to develop but then saying further more you know what about this low mod majority area do we know um what can we communicate out uh to the community to to enrich that story uh, was something that I found very difficult because ultimately it came down to me um, creating this boundary and then finding data for every specific census tract in that boundary 
and then doing an aggregate sum calculation to then put that into a table. Those steps um, are what hopefully I can show you in today's demonstration how to accomplish and why I jumped on the opportunity um, to go back in time in a sense and um, help my former self, self um, do my job a little um, a little different or a little easier, I would say. So I'm going to jump into a demo of uh, my sidewalk, but if there's any questions um, along the way, if I'm going through fast a part of the demo and you need to stop, um, please drop a, a note in the in the chat and I'm I'm happy to to pivot as as needed. Um, all right, so. Um, I will log into my sidewalk. Um, and right now what you're seeing in my sidewalk is our seek tool. Um, so seek is the initial step in the sort of data exploration process where we're looking to identify a part within um, your community that you might be interested in. So I'm going to choose Tarrant County um, and I want to understand Tarrant County at the census tract level. So I've made that search of Tarrant County at a community level and then subdivided um, the county into um, its uh, constituent census tracts. I'll hit finish selecting and that's now telling me you've selected 450 regions um, by which to communicate data about. So in our particular example, um, we're interested in um, low moderate income data specifically, but my sidewalk, um, as Laura made mentioned before, um, has over 45 disparate data sources um, from the US Census, EPA, BLS, Civil Rights Data Collection, um, ED Facts, um, HUD, uh, a, a plethora of data sources um, that can sort of elucidate your your audiences around uh, around the community. but. For this particular example, I want low and moderate um, income population. Um, that's coming from HUD's low and moderate income summary uh, data. Um, and uh, one of the things that you'll see within my sidewalk, not for this particular uh, indicator, but there is the availability to go back in, in time um, where that's available. Um, and you'll see that um, often pop up um, under each indicator. So I'll go ahead and select percent low and moderate income population. I'll hit finish selecting. Um, and that's now giving me um, a table showing um, all of the data uh, for each of these census tracts um, according to their, their percentage concentration. So I can go over to the map tab here and look at that um, distribution visualized for the entirety um, of um, of Tarrant County. Um, and this is where, you know, if, if we're sort of eyeballing as you create your own, um, you know, special, special um, focus areas for CDBG funding, like minor home repair dollars or, um, or lead, uh, lead abatement, um, you know, the, 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 the types of um, indicators that you might be looking at are um, maybe you're looking for um, elderly population. Um, and I can put uh, population by age. And um, maybe I want to look at uh, folks that are over um, 65. And then maybe I want to look at um, incomplete, uh, oops, Complete kitchen facilities, and I'll click on that, uh, and I'll just reset here. All right, so um, I have those indicators now selected here, and then I'm on the map. I can actually um, create a bivariate map and I can explore where within Tarrant County um, there is both a high concentration of low mod folks, but also where there's a high concentration um, of uh, folks that are that are um, 65 and above and sort of see where that is in relation um, to the county as a whole. 
And then perhaps um, what I want to do in, in this example, I'll remove bivariate map really quickly. Um, I want to do something like um, connect an area that might not have, um, you know, that, that might not, um, if it was an individual tract, might not fall within um, the the 50 plus one uh, rule of, um, the, let's say, like a, um, a minor home repair area. Um, and so, but if you do a, an aggregate sum of an area, you can get to that 51% um, marker. And so that's kind of what I'm going to be creating within my sidewalk. So as you see, I'm hovering over these areas and I'm realizing um, all these areas are pretty much over 51% um, with the ex exception of um, these two census tracts. Um, I can go into uh, my sidewalk and I'll go under our custom boundary tool. Um, and that's going to take all the same shapes that you've seen so far, block groups, census tracts, the various levels of geography within my sidewalk. Um, and it's going to make it such that we can create custom um, boundaries based on a selection um, so that we can then apportion or attribute data um, to that unique boundary. So I'll go up uh, to Tarrant County and it's in Texas. I'll break that down by the census track group again, and I'll go up here to Hearst. Um, and now, as you'll notice, I'm able to uh, sort of hover over this area and I'll use an eyeball test here to kind of make this unique boundary. Um, and as you, as you notice, as I start highlighting uh, census tracts, those are starting to be selected under this um, shopping cart, so to say. And then maybe I'll add this census tract here. And then I'll just say uh, Tarrant County Minor Home Repair area. And we'll see if this takes some time to save. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so now we've got this um, unique boundary saved. I'm gonna show you how we can go one step beyond exploring data to starting to put data um, into the bounds of, of storytelling and communicating out value. So I'm going to use um, the reports tool inside of my sidewalk under chart. Um, and uh, I will create um, a report from a template and um, it's going to be uh, my sidewalk has um, reports that you can start from scratch and I'll show you all how to do that here momentarily. But we also have um, report templates that allow you to start from best practice. So typically we're partnering with um, organizations around the country, um, the likes of in this particular example, New Jersey's Community Capital Fund. Um, we also work with um, the uh, uh, coalition for the National Housing, uh, National Low Income Housing Coalition, and um, Public Housing uh, Park. Jeez, uh, Louise, uh, Public and Affordable Housing uh, Resource Corporation, and and um, and and others to create um, uh, these these types of of reports. So I'll create um, a report for population and demographic change. And you'll notice uh, that at the start, it has this report um, for my default geography, which is um, Kansas City. Um, but I will, um, and of course, it is not showing up. We had some minor technical difficulties at the beginning of this. So give me one second as I correct this on the back end.
So let me see if it works in this environment. All right. Okay, so our report here is for Tarrant County. And um, I have this, uh, unfortunately, the, 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 um, the process by which we needed to make uh, this happen is facing some difficulties right now. So th this will be a slight different boundary than what you saw earlier. But this is a custom boundary that I created earlier um, that has that same area um, outside of Hearst in, in Tarrant County selected. I'll hit finish selecting here. And instead of showing me the, um, the you know, the entire uh, Tarrant County community, it's showing me this uh, community profile specific to um, uh, to this this test area. So now I can see um, based on this test area, this this new selection. Not only do we know that it's um, over fifty one percent low mod population. We also now know that it's uh, 22,000 um, you know, uh, folks within this community, 65% which are uh, BIPOC, um, and then breaking that down, um, it's uh, majority uh, white, but then Hispanic and African-American communities uh, contribute a large uh, majority of the minority population. And looking at, again, population change and demographic trends, um over over time and again here's that that boundary that boundary that we've created so my sidewalk um essentially allows you to create those custom boundaries will start you at um a, a great starting point to develop um, um kind of a an understanding of your community um and then by allowing you to change the geography of focus you're able to tell that same sort of a cohesive story of change um, in in multiple in multiple places. Um, let me let me show you all one last um, example of how we can use um, our data here um, and I'll just create a uh, blank report. So this is what a report would look like if you're starting completely from scratch. Um, and the reason why I want to show you is because um, it's relatively simple to recreate what you saw earlier. Um, so I've added total population here. Um, I will add uh, a map of this area. And then I'll break that map down by the census tracts that are within it. And then I'll do something which is really cool and I think very unique um, to my sidewalk, which is um, we have uh, property data from every um, county assessor's office around the country. And so we are able to show you, for example, median property market value change um, over time. And so this is specific to that part of the community um, how the assessed value uh, of that community has gone up over time. Obviously, since this is a majority low mod area, that's um, that's of concern. Um, but you know, as as we talk about storytelling and getting your your organization to build capacity around building insights, um, one of the newest features inside of my sidewalk um, is to get you to that insight by leveraging. Um, open AI and essentially a version of chat GPT within my sidewalk. So um, for example, under the median assessor market value by property type, um, I can go to that component and click on this co-write feature. And this is gonna help sort of elaborate and, and um, you know, reflect on the data that's within it um, based on a topic that you place within it. So I can say, um, summarize, the impact that uh, change in assessed value has on low and moderate income households. And then I'll hit generate text and it'll think for a second there and give you kind of an understanding. In this example, it's um, obviously very logical as uh, median household um, or assessed value 
goes up, um, that's going to uh, create a significant burden on, individ on individuals and families that make up the low and moderate income population. So I, I will stop there. Um, if there's any questions, oh, I see there's questions already uh, related to HUD reports. Has anyone used this for con plans? Do you have property sales data? Um, so we have had, uh, for example, the, the city of Kansas City, Missouri, uh, a few years ago, um, use, use our data uh, for, for the comp plan. Um, and their submission. Um, and uh, I, I don't have other examples off the top of my head. Um, so I'm not speaking for this group. Uh, but we have had uh, a couple of examples internally for, um, for um, my sidewalks um, network of users. Uh, property sales data. So um, we don't have, um, we don't have data uh, we don't have property sales data from um, from like sources like uh, CoStar or CoreLogic or other REIS type um, publishers of that data. Some county assessors provide um, an indication of the the last um, the last sold value, and so we have a um, within my sidewalk. Let me show you what the best uh, format to uh, show you that data would be. Um, I think it's called maybe um, uh, value. So t -t 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 Yeah. So the, for example, the the average property sell amount from um, recent uh, sale is something that we have um, w within my sidewalk. This count. This comes from uh, county assessors, and it isn't a perfect coverage for every place um, in the country. And what we also know is that um, it uh, is a it's an aggregate sum, right? So it's the aggregate average for a census tract. So it typically is less of an econometric than some people would hope for, but that that is essentially the version that we would have inside of my sidewalk. Okay. Um, any other questions? Because we're going to jump into... Um, a little bit of uh, examples uh, from a, a, a tool that we created or a, a dashboard that we created for our friends over at Tarrant County. Um, and then maybe just ask Maggie a little bit about how she uses my sidewalk. But if there are any other questions, uh, Wallace Engberg. Okay. Do you offer more than just export to CSV? Yes. That is a really good question. Maggie, I'm so sorry. I will uh, jump uh, back to you in just one second. So um, Wallace uh, asked whether you can download data from my sidewalk in, in more than just a CSV format. Um, the answer to that is uh, yes, you can. So for uh, in this example, I can download this as a, as an image. Um, for example, and that will be the the image will be the extent of the window that you see right now. So I can open that up and you see that that's the image that it prints out. You can download this data as a CSV file, uh, as mentioned before, and as a GeoJSON file for folks that use GIS or QGIS uh, or other um, tools um, related to um, GIS, um, you can download as a JSON, GeoJSON um, as well. Um, on the table, you can download that data as a, a simple CSV as well as a tidy CSV. So if you use R or other data processing tools, tidy CSV um, is a stacked format. And so it's probably best for you. 
Um, and then at the component level, you can also download um, data outside of my sidewalk as a CSV, um, as a image file, um, and then for maps um, as a J or as a uh, GeoJSON as well. So that's a that's a really great question. All right. Let's talk about Maggie. Maggie, uh, you've been a customer by Sidewalk for uh, some time now, um, and I'd love to get your experience on seeing how the tool has maybe changed uh, for you and your team and, and maybe the applications that you make use of it for right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So love my sidewalk. It's been um, a huge lifesaver and time saver. And then also one of my favorite things is getting to be able um, to test some assumptions. So if you're just curious about a particular data set, like is there a correlation? Is this particular area a spot that we need to be thinking about for affordable housing? Um, those are the types of questions that we can use um, my sidewalk to test some things out. Um, so I one thing you can go back, go back to the other one uh is there one more okay perfect Sorry. so either one is totally <laughs> so, <laughs> so one thing that i love so this is tarrant county our consortium area which looks a little bit like swiss cheese so it's not really those nice blocks um, that you're thinking about it's it's hot mess express right so this is what our consortium area looks like and so so often we get these um conversations from developers i had one this morning in fact about well wait well where's a good spot um, that we need to be thinking about for affordable housing, particularly since Tarrant County has so many different areas. So you saw how many census tracts we have. We also have 41 different areas, uh, different cities actually throughout Tarrant County. And we don't serve Fort Worth or Arlington or Grand Prairie, which are the middle um, of this lovely map. And so, you know, when you're looking at this, and I love the bivariate map feature that David was talking about, it's incredibly powerful um, because you know that maps are a really great way to tell the story. So in this particular particular case, you know, where you're looking at um, different population um, areas and you're able to, in this case, um, the, my sidewalk didn't have the consortium layer, but we were able to download the consortium later from HUD's website and pop it into my sidewalk and then run all sorts of other um, different things um, and different analyses. So go to the next slide. And this is another good one. It's like, if you're trying to check out different correlations. So in this particular case, we're talking about cost burden households correlated uh, with BIPOC, the percent BIPOC population. And so this also gives you a really good idea. The other part that I really like is you'll notice at the bottom, so where you've got the observations, the regression line, but then you get a little summary. And so you saw how David had used um, the chat feature to be able to help write a little summary. And then before that, which I can't wait to go check that feature out, there was a this little bit where you see where the notes where it says, you know, there's a moderate relationship between these two variables as percent cost burden households increases, the percent of BIPOC population also tends to increase. And so those little variables, especially with this correlation tool is a really fantastic way to be able to check out different assumptions, particularly if you're looking at a specific area. You can go to the next one. And so here's just another way to check it out. And then like David was saying is in all of these different slides, what's great is you can download them um, as like a, a PNG or an image file. And then you can drop that into any other report. You can also write the report in my sidewalk if you want. Um, I have done that some, but it's usually much easier for me just to like grab the data and drop it in a, a report or in an email. Like I said, so often it's usually a developer that's looking at affordable housing, which is where I'm diving into my sidewalk and pulling out some specific stats that they've asked about. Um, especially, and I love this one where you're comparing like the consortium to Tarrant County to Texas and see what that those total renter occupied units are. Um, and then just being able to run those comparisons, I think is really, really helpful. Go to the next one. I think the next one is was that on it? side. Yeah. I, Perfect. I, I'd love, I, and I don't know uh, 
Maggie, if you can share a little bit about um, this, yeah, because we can demo it here in a second. Fantastic. Yes, let's please do. So um, before David, there was Brandon Gum, uh, who <laughs> I'm a dear friend of mine. And uh, we were talking about uh, the affirmatively furthering fair housing piece. And we're like, man, I really wish there was a way that we could do some something that would save some time, uh, especially from our planning team, right? Because there's a ton of data that was needed. And so what was beautiful was Brandon helped us build out this fair housing assessment, which really goes through the whole thing, right? So you can see on the left side, it's broken into different sections. So like you've got the state of fair housing, population overview, housing overview, segregation, integration, housing disparities, barriers to opportunity. You can generate as a PDF, you can send it to people, you can give them a path, you can password protect it and give them the opportunity to play around with it. It's really quite lovely and saves a ton of time. And so um, if anything, it serves as a great starting point and does a lot of that data pull for you. Um, and then over time, you can also set it up um, to like, you could take this, like the way that the report is set up, change the geography and you'd be in good shape. You'd have to like go through and, and pick some different um, elements, double check a few things, but for the most part, you'll be uh, saving a ton of time. And, you know, especially when you're thinking about like our consortium area, which just again, the boundary. Oh my gosh. Right. And so that's, what's really lovely about this is it takes something that can be super cumbersome and really break it out. Um, because when you say Tarrant County outside of Fort Worth, Arlington and Grand Prairie, you think that's pretty easy, right? But then for a developer that might get a little bit trickier. Um, and so that's where this kind of data is super important and helpful to them. And that's really it. Yeah, and that's, uh, let me go back to this slide. Um, and that was um, all we had in in uh, place um, in terms of things to show. Um, are there any questions out in the group, especially around data and features? I'm happy to go back um, and show things over again. But um, I think to, to Maggie's point um, earlier, our intent as an organization is not only to put together a best in class uh, data library, but also to help it have function and use. Um, and that's really where we're going next in organizing that data. And certainly um, the, the tools that you saw uh, are a part of that. Um, and now we're really excited to see where some of our AI functionality is moving forward. Um, David, play, can I add just one that. thing about some of the HUD reports that I think are really lovely um, that this group might be benef like might benefit from? So the my sidewalk worked with HUD to develop some really cool climate resiliency reports and then talk about how you can use your home and CDBG funding to address those different things and then what your areas might be at greatest risk for. So when I typed into the chat, just like the, the HUD reports earlier, those are the ones that I was thinking about. And I just think it's important to note that my sidewalk does have a really good relationship with HUD. Um, and the fact that they have that collaborative spirit, I think is is super beneficial um, to not only my sidewalk, but then the communities that use it. So I just wanted to get that little bit. In. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I'm like blanking on the name of the report, but that's a, that's a really good... Um... That that's a really good reminder. Uh, and actually, it won't be in here because this is um, this is our staging environment. But um, let me go back to our other um, tool, which is regular my sidewalk. Um, and the the point that Maggie was making was um, uh, a the data challenge that uh, HUD and um, Noah put together and um, the heat vulnerability. I'm not finding any report templates today. Um, let's see. I will have to find them. <laughs> I was like, I'll go pull one if I need to. Yeah. Do you do you have a link, Maggie? Because that, I bet that I would could. be that would be super helpful. Um, yeah. But well, um, pull that out while you finish um, having answering some of those other questions, and I'll go grab that link for you. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. So uh, Raquel asked, "Is the assessment of fair housing a built-in report for any community. Yes. So that is how the fair housing assessment was structured. Um, uh, we structure our data to, uh, it's just like a data philosophy for, for 
my sidewalk as a whole, we structure our data with thinking about um, national coverage and, and completion of coverage. Um, and so when we put together this particular um, uh, dashboard, um, it was created with the intent that any community um, that um, is considered a place and that, that receives CDBG funds um, would would be able to come in here, update the geography, and all of the indicators will update accordingly. So that's how we're built, and that's how we build um, assets. Um, so that's a really great question. Um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, climate resiliency reports. Yep, uh, Raquel, we can pull some of those up. And um, oh, thank you, Caitlin, so much for that. Uh, let me pull that up in. Yes, this is what I was looking for. So um, these are the reports that we built um, in partnership with, or as part of the competition with, with um uh hud and um and noah and um <laughs> and so all of these reports are available in my sidewalk with the same uh perspective that we are talking about in this example the increasing temperatures and extreme heat we want to answer three primary um questions of inquiry what is our local risk uh to temperatures and extreme heat who is most vulnerable and how do you reduce those um, and so um, no matter the boundary, we can come in here, update um, the place, and then you'll receive um, the this list of indicators. So the um, your heat risk within um, a table, so 16.2 uh, in uh, Omaha is relatively moderate in heat risk. The impact, economic impact, how that risk is sort of di distributed over space um, and then jumping into talking about social vulnerability and who it actually impacts within, within the, um, the city of Omaha. So um, again, all these uh, reports are built with the perspective of leveraging the structure of our data and communicating about a specific uh, place within, within the country. Um, do you have an online instruction book online to show the various steps to use my sidewalk? So we have, certainly you can go to our website um, and, and look up various demos and um, ways that my sidewalk has uh, been shown and um, sort of utilized in the past. We have a knowledge center within my sidewalk. Um, so if you have access to my sidewalk, there's a sort of plethora of articles that can help you um, identify exactly what you're doing within my sidewalk and then the steps um, required to get there. Um, and we we keep that pretty up to date and consistent. Um, and then my sidewalk um, is a small but mighty startup. And so you're not um, talking to a giant corporation. We have um, bi-weekly or, or twice a week, um, trainings Tuesdays and Thursdays so our uh, users can come in and, and talk to our, our training experts and and sort of get the, the help they need memberships to my sidewalk as a as a source um, I'm sorry as a as a software comes with um, a contact person such as myself for a number of our customers who could then help sort of like field questions in Maggie's uh, experience, she had kind of like the Cadillac of, I have an issue, I'm gonna build you something, uh, but it is in line with our sort of service philosophy and you have a need, um, we're, we're gonna guide you through that need. We're not um, just gonna say good luck with my sidewalk and um, and, and best of luck once you've purchased. So that's, that's usually how people can experience um, support and in how to do things within within my sidewalk. Yep, and Caitlin, who is on our team uh, and is amazing, is uh, also um, pointing out something that we we do have a live chat feature um, where you can pull up. Um, part of that will have uh, some identification if you're asking something that comes up a lot to give you a, a templated answer. But our team is in the back, um, also keeping up to to uh, 
to the minute with that chat. And so once you get one of us online, you do keep us um, sort of working through your your question. Or again, somebody will quarterback you to your your point person and um, jump on a call with you and, and work work things out that way. Um on the export function, I'm wondering if you support connections to like BigQuery or Google Cloud for the ability to use and manipulating data outside of the MySandbox user interface. Um, yes, Wallace, um, that is a great question. And it's um, a difficult demo to show you here, but we have um, a version of MySandbox that is stripped of all of the user interface. Um, and the functionality, but also the, I guess, the design limitations that come with that. Um, and you can plug that into your own data lake or your own, um, you know, your particular BI tools, whatever that might be uh, for you um, and um, leverage my sidewalks uh, data that way. So it's uh, it's called Warehouse um, and it comes as um, a shared instance where everybody's coming to us uh, to download that data and you're sort of sharing that resource with all the other um, customers that are subscribers of Warehouse, um, or it can be um, a hosted instance. So we're actually giving you a Delta file of um, our entire warehouse that's hosted somewhere that you keep. And then we provide you uh, Delta files to keep you up to date as um, you know, our, our data library is weekly updating. So it, it, um, it, it stays up to date and our, our warehouse experience is um, similar in that way. Really great question. All right. Um, so going back and uh, wrapping up where Laura is helping us move towards, um, as she mentioned, we will be at the uh, conference in Salt Lake City. I'm bummed that it didn't get selected to go to Salt Lake City and meet all of you. Uh, but you will get to meet um, my colleagues Charles um, out of uh, Chicago and Betsy out of uh, Western Kansas, who are awesome um, and are part of our distributed workforce that represent us around the country. So if you're going to be at the conference, please stop by and say hello. Um, usually what you get at the conference is one of these lovely people um, will pull up a report and ask you for your geography and send you your own custom geography report um, to your email. And so you have a, a takeaway. So um, we are not um, only co conference swag uh, available. We're also data and data reports available at um, at the conference for you. So stop by, say hello, um, and make use of us in that way. Um, I'll also share our contact information. Um, I, If you're interested in having a membership to my sidewalk, I am not your person, but if you're interested in um, conversations around housing and community development, um, and if I've seen an example of somebody in my sidewalk do um, something interesting, um, I am your person. Right now, we're working with um, the state of Iowa on their housing needs model, and we're about to submit their 2050 housing needs projections today. Uh, so it, I work in the vein of that type of work, and if you're ever interested in having a cool conversation around housing. Um, I'm available to you. Um, you guys know Maggie, her contact information is up there. I won't volunteer uh, her time in any way, uh, but I know that she is often fielding questions I, as I keep up with the the NACED email threads um, and, and being an awesome resource, um, obviously to us, but I know to many of you. So shout out to Maggie. Thank you for being on. Um, and that was her contact information as well. All right, uh, Laura, that's all I had. I think um, over to you uh, if there's no other questions. Yeah, thank you both uh, for the information and the presentation. Thank you everybody also for your questions, which were really helpful. Um, I know David especially, but also Maggie would be happy to answer any more questions you have. So please feel free to reach out to them. David, we're looking forward to seeing your colleagues in Salt Lake next month. And I know a number of people on this call as well. Uh, and thank you also, especially my sidewalk for being a member of NACED, one of our many valued private sector partners that are providing valuable resources to the NACED local government, government membership. Um, so thank you guys. And, and also this recording will be available to share with your colleagues or if you wanna check out any part of it again. Um, so thanks everybody and have a great rest of your day. Bye everyone. 
Bye. Thanks, y'all.